welcome for attending this evening's presentation on connections and relationships with elders from the First Nations, salmon, in our culture, an inherent right to self-determination. My name is Christy Jamison. My sister and I, Tis Peterman, are both from the Kashadi clan. My name is Duskawa. Tis's name is <laughs> Cleek. We, along with Cindy DeWitt, Mita DeWitt, Kendry Caesar, and Jocelyn Estes, are the descendants of the last proclaimed Chief Shakes the Seventh, Charlie Jones. I would like to recognize our Southeast Alaska Indigenous Transboundary Commission, better known as SEITC. Now please help me give a warm welcome to Guja, Hereditary Chief of Haida Gwaii, and Kirby Muldo, Simsian and Gitsan descent. It is an honor for us to be here tonight. My English name is Hapulahsa, or Kirby Maldo, sorry. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> My ancestral name, which comes from the Gixan people on the Skeena River, is Hapulahsa. Kadansta. High Chief from the Haida. Guja from the Haida people. I'll let Gujao introduce himself. <laughs> no, you <he> didn't. <laughs> I'd like to sing a song to start just to make me less, uh, less attractive. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, about looking inwards, about what, what you are, who you are, and, and, and what's at stake. Oh, I am I am I separated by waters and that's more than 10,000 years ago and that's where people use coppers, they use the sea lion whiskers, shit deep and feathers for and all these things were from our people interacting and you know borrowing from each other, learning from each other and so the fashions moved and everything became part of all of us. But those cultures, every one of them, it's about our relationship to the earth, the land that we live on, and it's reflected in our arts. So the arts is celebrating that relationship to the land. They did everything they can 
to try to take away the land culture. And in fact, they did everything they could to spoil that earth that makes us what we are. So with their scientific methods, they go, everything that they manage, they seem to destroy it. And so they have this whole human created world, human created environments, and, uh, and they just don't seem to care what's going on out there. You talked about the relationship to the land. And inextricably, we're related to the land. We're related. We live with the land, not off of the land. And we have to remember that. The land is a direct reflection of our health, the health of our people. The health of the salmon are a direct reflection of the health of our people. The salmon are a keystone species and very, very important to our people. In the Kixan and the Timsian people, we have stories about how the salmon saved us. They came to save us when we were starving. And all we have to do is look after them, look after the habitat, be careful about how we walk in our language. We say hagwali in, and that means walk softly. We always say that, we say hagwali in. So when you're walking on the land, you make sure that you walk softly. Don't destroy everything that's behind you. We have rights, but more importantly, we have responsibilities to the generations to come. I want to talk about the difference between food security and food sovereignty. I look at food security as when a fisherman goes and gets that food for you. They deliver it to the store. You can afford to go and buy it. That's food security. Food sovereignty is when you have total control over your environment. 100% over the land, the air, the water, so that your natural foods will survive and be here for you and generations to come. I also wanna talk about connections and relationships amongst ourselves, our people. I look up to the higher. I asked them one day, I said, how do you guys do it? I said, you guys are so united. Guja looks at me and he kind of smirks and he says, we fight just like everybody else, he said. We don't always get along. But when we sit across the table from industry, from government, he said, we're united. That's where we need to get. The only thing government and industry have against us is division. We have to come together and sit in rooms and work out our differences. Think about your significant other. Do you always get along? No. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you meet in the middle. And when you want to have a healthy relationship, that's what you need to do. And I encourage you to sit down with an open heart and an open mind and work out those differences. Work them out because we're stronger when we're at peace and we're united. Remember what I talked about, the difference between food security and food sovereignty. Food sovereignty is when you have 100% control over your food, when it's harvested, where it's harvested. 
the environment. What's happening to the rivers? What's happening to the watersheds? I'm trying to figure out the story about the little man on the back of the raven rattle and the granddaughter face, and his name was Papa. And so that is our story. It turns out we only add part of the story. And the other part of the story would happen in your pagan country. And some of it was in Xinjiang country. It was the same character that all of our people talked about. The guy and how he got his power from the, from the land of it. And was able to show people how to become close to their spirits. I work with plant medicines from the Amazon and our own plant medicines in ceremony. The old people did that. They took medicine to get closer to the spirit. And what they've done to us is they've done everything to keep us away from that. If we lose that, we really lose the very core of who we are. Those borders divided us. And we have to reconnect. We have to stand together. And we have to put our differences aside. I said earlier, well, you're not all going to get what you want, but let's do what's right for the collective, for the people, for the land, so that our descendants can enjoy it just as we have. You know, I was told because I have a Dixan status card, but my mom is Simsan. For years, they told me that I couldn't fish in Tsimsian waters. And they harassed us for years until one day my uncle came down to the dock. There was four fisheries officers there. My uncle came down and they knew who he was, big chief. And he walked up to them and he said, you guys can leave now. He says, you know who these people are? He said, these are my, these are my nephews, my nieces. Their mother is Tsimsian. He said, you never bother them again. And they haven't ever since. But that's what I'm seeing. You, you have to exercise your rights. They're going to harass you. Yeah, they pretend to be conserving by chasing around the Indian, yes. you know, while in the meantime, allowing wonder of everything. We just keep exercising our rights. They can't tell us what to do. Nope. They have no right to tell us what to do as Indigenous peoples. We've been here for thousands of years. I heard your words today, and it really touched my heart. I heard familiar things. I serve on a transboundary commission. I wondered why there's even a boundary. I don't think our people even recognize that boundary. My clan and my people originated on the northern part of Idaho. We migrated up here and settled. So we are connected. And we also came up on the Grease Trail. And that grease trail crosses the boundary. We are connected. I was invited to hide a glide many years ago. Quite honestly, I was a little bit nervous to go because I've never been so far south. And I was a little bit afraid of you guys as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I went, and the red carpet was rolled out for me. And I went to the villages, Skunglai, the hot springs, Minstons, we're the same people. Let's remove that boundary. 
I wanted to bring out my tribal idea where the government says, I can't go to your country without food. Why? You're my family. I don't need this. I should be able to just go. The other thing I heard, ka ka, the land order. Ka ka is very powerful man. We know his story. We know that he went down to your country. We know the power of Ka Ka. So when I heard you mention him, I knew we were connected. Deeply spiritual human being. I want all of us to come together, set aside our hard feelings, Forgive each other and learn that we are all family. My grandfather is Tlingit name, Jana. He came from your country. So I know you are family. When our cultures come together, nobody can stop us. And yes, practice our sovereignty, go fishing, gather up all the food, take care of our ancestors. I'm just very touched to listen to you. It touches my heart deeply. And it heals me. And the speech power for healing me. It's really special to be in the same room as you. We are a powerful, powerful people. We have something to offer the world. Our peoples have always known it and in time and memorial have stood for this balance that we have always had to keep the natural world in order. This is not the first time that we have been through this. As we come together right now, as our neighbors and as our brothers and sisters have come and traveled to this place and on the sacred ground to say these words, to remember our origins, our originality, to stand strong. The secret is out once again. After the sensitive time on the earth, after the last two and a half years, after the time that we have spent in our homes with our families, our minds are sharp again, our spirits and our hearts are strong again. And what is the voice that is coming forward? It is an original voice, a powerful and strong voice that we lack nothing, that we are good just the way we are. The animals knew that. Nothing higher, nothing less. Equal and together. And as we come together, it is time that we stand in our place. You are right. The world is watching. You are correct. We have this time. We have this place and this space. As we come and we harvest, and gather our food, our herring, 
the fish, the berries, all the things that sustain us. No one can take that away because if they do, they are attempting to take our spiritual food away right out of our mouths. We cannot let that happen. There is too much, too much to save right now, too much to go forward with right now. As you have come and your elders have come to witness, you are not our neighbors. You are the half of us. This is a really sacred time right now in the world. This is a sacred time that we need each other. When I say the secret is that for us to open, it is that we as a people coming together know how to manage this land. Know what is correct. Do not need permission. Because our people have shown for tens of thousands of years already how to do it. We've got that knowledge for this land that others do not have. So it is wise to listen. It is good of you to come in this way. It is good of you to share these words. As I look at each and every one of my brothers and sisters that are gathered here today, I know they're fighters. I know they're warriors. I know they have strong voices. I know that we're here together, and I know that we will stand strong together. We have those generations that are coming to fill up their bellies. The secret is out. We are powerful. We never, ever lost everything that our ancestors have given us. Somebody tried to tell us a lie. Somebody tried to tell us how to walk. It's not true. We can fish, we can provide, we can gather. We can be that much stronger together. And that's what we're going to do together. When we go out after this, or even before this, how he has no fear, but there are his sisters and his cousins and his family who do. And I myself have that same fear. I'm sure all of us have grown up with the same thing of give respect mm -hmm. to the land and our elders telling us to take what we want when we want and when we need it because that's our land and it belongs to us. But I'm sure there are others also like myself who have that fear of running into authority, running into a lot of people who have power over our areas and we don't know what to do in those situations. So we don't do anything at all. So what advice do you have to give to us, to those who are afraid? Young lady. I lived in a time where we were in gunfights about fishing rights. One thing is that we're smart. Be smart. Think it out. Two, you need to be tough. You know, people are going to, as, as my nephew says here, they're going to fight with you. They're going to treat you bad. And we have been treated bad. We have to learn how to assert our right to be native. Did you know that at the time that I was growing up, we weren't allowed to be native? We weren't allowed to speak our language. This building was funded by the tourist industry because they wanted to make something for tourists. But they didn't know what they were really doing. Down in Saxon, they built a thing called the... Um, um, that guy that um, uh, invented Alaska. Sewer. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just, they, they, I'm not very smart, right? <laughs> but I know that you, but together we are. So they built a stone pole. The Seward family complained, says, we don't want to have the guys um, doing the shame pole, right? Well, the shame pole comes from the government. They build it, they give us money every few years to rebuild the <laughs> you gotta be smart. You gotta be courageous. You gotta be united. My Clinton uh, brothers and sisters, and then my own Cincinnati people, they're always fighting with each other. <laughs> yeah, 
other. We're always fighting with each other, but we love each other. We do. We need to love each other. Care about each other. You gotta be tough. You really do. We need everybody. We need somebody. When the young fellow here goes out there to exercise his rights, when we've done it, there's 100 witnesses. They're not there to get arrested. They're there to witness. And they're there with their cameras. A few things that I have learned being a mother is that we teaching her to be Tlinka or Haida or our indigenous ways is not about the color of her skin or her eyes or her hair or really her blood quantum. It is a way of life. And that I have the honor and privilege to teach her, for instance, on my birthday, we went out and went very quickly. Seems simple, but it's something that I have very fond memories of doing with my grandparents. They would stick me on a rock and tell me to sing loud. <laughs> and they would go and, and I would harvest with them, but I would go fishing with them. I learned to smoke salmon. I learned to can salmon. And while so many of our conversations right now are talking about very important, serious issues like what's happening to our salmon, what's happening to our herring, the rights that we have as indigenous people, the fight that we've had to do, the generational trauma we've had to sustain, and the fatigue from fighting that we've had from generations of oppression and marginalization. But we are also people that carry a lot of strength and love and courage, and we have the opportunity to teach lighter things to our next generation. So while we are carrying the burden of 250 to 300 years of oppression in our current generation, we don't have to continue to pass that generational trauma onto the next generation. They don't have to carry the burden and the weight of that. Lola at two and a half is not going to understand how our rights were taken away from us and how we have to fight for more rights or what's happening to our fish. But she understands going in the woods and picking berries with me. She understands hagu. She understands gunashtish, hawa. I find a greater responsibility in teaching her our way of life in our stewardship of the land and giving and teaching her courage and teaching her strength and teaching her stewardship and teaching her respect and teaching her love.